What's up, spectators? Welcome back to another episode of Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. No, Phoenix, wait. Oh, God, I messed up. That's what happens when you're on a roll. Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright. Yes. Hope you're all having a lovely Saturday. And without further ado, let's get back into the episodes. This one is Shady Types, the sightings of two strange individuals deep in the forest. Who could they be? I don't know who it could be. Could be anyone. I don't know. Did you say suspicious characters? Who are you? I don't know you, Muffet. That's white! Suspicious characters! I saw them, I did! In Nulwich Woods, a pair of mysterious men. Oh, what did I give him? I gave him a really weird... Oh, okay. Oh, inga, inga! They're the desperados, I tell you. Oh, oh. They're an embarrassment is what they are, and right on the day of the fire festival, too. Okay, I'll take them on. I'm not afraid. What do you mean I'll take them on? You're nothing but a... Ah, 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 ah. Dear Lord. I usually do... Do love a good challenge. What is all this? Seems like everyone and his brother has come here to make complaints at us. Perhaps it's just that they all want to see you again, and think you can help. Whatever the reason, we can't very well ignore the fact that there seem to be a pair of villains on the loose. Oh, I just had a thought of who they might be. Me too. There were those two weird looking rogues, right? Oh, those guys. I think they were called... Robs and Mugs, you mean. That's the pair that waylaid a spell in the woods that one time. Aspella, you wouldn't happen to know what became of those two, would you? Actually, yes I do. They were rehabilitated and are both currently working in the library. But apart from them, we don't have any other suspects, do we? Well, in that case, I suggest we all sit out to the woods and take a look around for ourselves. Good thinking, Professor. Sounds like another exciting case to crack. Yeah, Shimona Nick. We're up for this too, right? Man, it's almost June, right? Whew, it's gonna be crazy since the next Ace Attorney game in Japan comes out in July. The wait is gonna kill me. Oh, and I'm gonna try really hard to avoid watching content on it, um, Japanese stuff. Man, if only I speak fluent Japanese, and then played the game, and also translated it. Oh man, that'd be so much work, it'd be crazy. But I think it'd be worth it. According to the witnesses, this is where they recited. Two clearly suspicious characters. Supposedly basking in the sun somewhere around here. They certainly sound like a couple of laid-back villains if they were basking in the sun. Whoa! There they are, over there! I see them too. Definitely suspicious. I'm not sure I've ever seen a more suspicious looking pair of characters. Indeed, Luke. I must admit they somewhat resemble the kind of image one often sees on most wanted posters. Oh! After my many years as a judge, I have recently found myself wondering, what exactly do we mean by crime? How exactly can we define it? We are no more than bubbles being carried by a great river, drifting this way and that until we disappear. The tiny sound of the bubbles bursting goes unheard by anyone, and yet they undoubtedly do make their sound. Blam! That's not the sound bubbles make when they pop. Indeed, that is a unique way of looking at things. I, meanwhile, believe that the world is not as simple as those who use witchcraft are criminals. Bird up. Bird up. Bird up. Even so, the warm wind blows over the grassy plains, quietly causing the red flowers to sway. Before moving on, no one sees the wind as it moves. It is only felt by the flowers as they are touched. Hmm. They seem to be having some kind of complicated, high-level conversation. Indeed, Luke. It would appear they're involved in deep philosophical discussion. That's just like Mr. Wordsmith. He always sounds so poetic and deep. 
you can say that again. I think it's a bit too deep for me. I'm lost. Honestly, I'm not sure whether what I'm hearing is sublime or ridiculous. I feel that after a year since I stepped down as judge, I still cannot say with utter confidence what path my life should take, or what on earth I should aim for now. There were days when even I wished I simply became the wind. But if I were to become the wind, I would never again be able to slurp upon spaghetti. This is going to be sort of off topic, but it's a... I recently watched a show that ended back maybe a, uh, early this month or a month ago called Shirobako, and it's about these uh, these girls who in high school wanted to create an anime together, and they each specialize in different, different fields, like one would be an animator, one would be a production assistant, one would be voice actress, and all these things. And it's, it's sort of about them a couple of years after high school working in these different companies trying to get uh trying to make their dream come true and it's really good you guys should really watch it just the whole philosophical existential crisis they're having reminded me of that and it's such a good anime you guys should watch it indeed to be honest with you i'd never ever uh, even considered that shirobako that's the name of the show it would seem that i should continue on my current path at least for the time being Whatever the case, I cannot even consider a world in which one is not free to slurp upon one's spaghetti. Where is that kindly neighbor who will free me from that fate this evening? My fate. And from that despicable monster we call money. Hmm. Somehow, listening to them talking is making me feel all profound. Me too. I suddenly have a profound feeling that I'd like to eat some spaghetti right about now. It's just like Mr. Wordsmith, always the most tasteful choice of words. Personally, I get the feeling he's trying to persuade the judge to buy him dinner tonight, in a roundabout sort of way. That's exactly what he's doing. Oh! Well, I never. This is the most distinguished turnout we have here. Fortuitous meetings are no more than inevitable vicissitudes within the natural ebb and flow of our lives. May I ask what it is that brings you all to an out-of-the-way place like this? Ah, well, actually... We came here to check on reports of two suspicious characters said to have been basking in the sun. Tactful as always, Maya. Two suspicious characters, you say? And you took the trouble to come all the way out here just to warn us? Well, don't worry, we'll keep our eyes open. Missing the point as always, your honor. By the way, what brings you to this neck of the woods? Well, it's a little embarrassing, really. I was just seeking advice from my wise companion here. I've been wondering how to proceed in life, now that I've stepped down from my post. They should really have a judge in, a, in an Ace Attorney game be really, really serious and like, um... Sort of like, a. Uh... Oh my god, I forgot his name. It's the only prosecutor I've forgotten the name of. Dual Destiny's Prosecutor. Oh my god, hold on, give me a minute. But, uh, but, uh, oh my god. This is embarrassing. Well, in any case, a judge sort of like his character. Or, or like a judge like Edgeworth. Like, really, really intelligent, but sort of like, m sort of a mean side. Because in every Ace Attorney game, it's always, it's almost always been the same judge. There was that case with the other judge, but he wasn't, he wasn't very memorable either. I don't know. I just a nice change of pace from the sort of silly old man, don't know what I'm doing vibe going. I've been wondering how to proceed in life now that I've stepped down from my post. And did you find the answer to your question from Wordsmith? Well, to be honest... I have no idea what he was talking about. Is that so? Why am I not surprised to hear that? I was getting into a bit of a nervous sweat just about the time you arrived. I am merely floating on a warm breeze, shedding warm tears like flower petals dancing in the wind. Okay. Alright. So, you decide to become a fortune teller, huh? Yes. 
When I met you all about a year ago, I came to realize my beliefs were being changed by the story. The belief that witches must be guilty was just an illusion. This world is incomprehensible, like a dark and puzzling labyrinth. In a sense, puzzles are a microcosm of that la labyrinth. Or so I like to believe. And that's why you decide to become a fortune teller. That's right. I felt that as a fortune teller, I could help those who come, uh, came to consult me find their way forward to a brighter future. But to tell you the truth, I felt my appearance might be well suited to the role too. Personally, I think your appearance fits the role- Oh, I skipped it. My thumb twitched. Whoops. But when it comes to giving people advice, I came to realize it's not that easy. Really? I believe all is well within one's grasp. The answer to the ultimate puzzle of life. Please don't say it's 42. Mr. Wordsmith. When faced with a perplexing puzzle, the way forward is to broaden one's outlook. Then, while holding that broadened view, look back upon that same puzzle. Certainly, when I have a problem, I'm often unable to see anything else. So we should broaden our outlook then. That sounds like good advice. And then you should make use of your hands, eyes, and all of your senses to feel out a solution. If you look around you, at those bushes, or that tree over there, there's always a hint waiting to be found. Of this, you can be certain. Hint 1, Hint 2, Hint 3, and naturally, the Super Hint are waiting there for you. Huh? Hey Nick, check this out! I found some Hint Coys in that tree and bushes over there. Are you kidding me? Well, when it comes to solving puzzles, each to his own is what I say. A puzzle is a labyrinth born of the human intellect. However, occasionally, there are puzzles that can prove most refreshing when unraveled at the drop of a hat. A metaphorical hat, that is. Take the following puzzle, for example. Give it to me. What is it? Is it a bridge puzzle? Ooh! A roller, a roller coaster of the cosmos! Ride the starry road to the other side. The star-filled road is the only way across. Unfortunately, the path is not quite so simple. You can ride on top of the road as well as below it, but which will get you across safely? Slide the stars across. Touch the orb on the touch screen below and slide the stylus in any direction view to view the starry road. Okay. You will then be able to select from two possible answers, up or down. Touch submit and the cart will take off down the starry road. Okay. Huh. So it's only... Okay. So there's only one... It's a 50-50 shot. So if we go up... Just sort of following this in my head here. Maybe if I turn the 3D on it'll help. Let's see. Actually, I think it does help. So if she goes up... She'll sort of whirl around... End up going... Upside down, upside down, upside down, upright, upright. Yep, yeah, okay, so just go straight. Up, yep, go. Yep, and then she turns upright here in a second. Boom. Too easy. Let's give this answer a try. Check it out, Nick. Success! You surf the stars to safety! Boy, I just love this kind of puzzle. Two choices means you only have to try it twice. That's amazing, you get it wrong every time. Did you really just say that, Maya? So here's my amazing strategy. Step one, try up just to see what happens. Step two, victory pose! Turns out that up was totally the right answer. Well, I'm not sure what to make of that strategy. You know, I just realized what a mysterious object the hint coin really is. How do you mean, Mr. Wright? Well, I always set out to get all the coins and leave no stone unturned. But then, when I get stuck in a puzzle, I never end up using them. 
Not a one. Sort of feels like I'm wasting a coin. Like I hate seeing the hint coin counter go down, you know? Ah, I know exactly what you mean. That just goes to show what a cheapskate you are, Nick! I'm not sure that's entirely true, Miss Faye. Nonsense! Huh? I've seen and done a lot of things during this long life of mine. On the great ocean of puzzles, the traveler who carries a wealth of coins runs the risk of being pulled under by their weight. Whoa, that sounds like it belongs in a fortune cookie. Which is why, whenever I tackle any puzzle, I always look at the super hint before I start. While it may be true that the world is full of things that are difficult to fathom, by your own words, wordsmith, I find you quite clearly in a word, guilty. I am merely floating on a warm breeze, shedding warm tears like Flower Girls Mask in the twilight of a very long day. Well, as I've said already, when it comes to solving puzzles, each to his own is what I always say. Wow. I feel like we didn't really get anything done that time. That was... A puzzle with the 50-50 chance of getting it right? It's a little silly. It's a little silly. Well, you get what you get. To each to his own. So stay tuned next Monday for the next episode. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye!